Okay, it's um, after the close on uh, October 12th. This video is going to be posted on October 13th. And uh, because uh, it, it's not that much different than the last chart I had of, uh, of the S&P 500. But uh, we, I think we got some confirmation on something today, so I wanted to share it. This is being brought to you by OldSchoolCharts.com. Uh, what that's all about is using the methods your dad and granddad used to uh, figure out what's going on in the markets. They had a lot of wisdom back then. They didn't have computers. They didn't run real quick uh, stochastics and moving averages and all this stuff. They looked at a chart, drew trend lines, and, uh, and that there's a wealth of information to be learned from these older methods of reading charts. So that's what uh, this is all about. Let me get rid of the name, and let's look at the chart. As always, this is for educational or entertainment purposes. If you decide uh, to uh, enter into any investment decision based upon this chart or upon anything you hear me say, you do that at your own risk. I'm not an investment uh, broker, counselor, advisor, or anything of the sort. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So, let's look at this chart. This is a long-range view. We can back out just a little bit further to where we see the top of what was the bull market back in October of 2007. And we see a slow drifting down, and then we begin to see the wheels really come off. Down at this paddock bottom, if you look at either side of this, you will see a familiar chart pattern. You'll see an inverse head and shoulders bottom. This uh, inverse pattern generally appears at major market turns. This is not the kind of thing that sets up for an inter intermediate correction. This is the kind of thing that says the bear market is done. Uh, of course, it's not uh, a done deal until this pattern is confirmed. This pattern has been confirmed for a long time. There's some interesting things here. If you look at this uh, dark green line, uh, I, t I took this peak and this peak because that they, they really kind of set the tone for the accelerated decline as, as far as the peaks go. And I extended that line. And then I, I took the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders and extended it. And I think it was really just interesting that where those lines meet was also where the pattern broke out. So that at the same time the resistance in the neckline was overcome was the same, oh my, it may have been the very same day that the resistance in that descending trend line was overcome and we, and we have been above that point ever since. Uh, you'll notice that th the S&P never really came back for a solid back test of that neckline. I was expecting that to happen. It never happened. Um, that might explain some of this weakness that we've experienced over the past uh, five months or so. So uh, let's do another thing. I want you to look at this light green line. This is drawn over the top of the uh, bull market. It extends over the top that was recently set in this past April of 2010. And if we zoom in a bit, we will see that for the last one, two, three sessions, the S&P has closed over that level. Uh, I take that as a very bullish sign. Um, I believe that we're going to be seeing some more highs. We're going to be seeing uh, prices probably reach uh, at least the mid-1200s. Why? Well, we've got another, what do we call it, inverse head and shoulders pattern. Here's the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. If we measure the depth of that head, which I'm doing here, this is actually a shadow uh, of a red candle that lines up right on that grid line. But if I kind of split the difference between that candle and the one next to it and move that to the neckline, we end up with a target right around 1250. So, right now I am in some of the 3X ETFs. Um, 
I'm in, I'm in uh, DRN for real estate, well, which I believe is going to be uh, making this kind of move in the next few days. It's lagging a bit. And I'm also in, uh, in some of the banks, which have also lagged. So it's, it's my hope that as these, uh, as these banks and the real estate, uh, commercial real estate in particular, that, uh, that they will pick up some steam and begin to add to this uh, rally. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. We've got uh, another inverse head and shoulders, not as, not as big, not as impressive as the one that we had back here. But uh, by golly, you can sure see the similarities there, can't you? So where th this one took prices, uh, you know, significantly higher, this one does not have the same implication. By the way, if we want to find out where this pattern is pointing to, we can do the same little exercise here. Let's put it on the day it broke out. And we're looking at something as a target from this. 1340, 1350. Now I have to tell you this is on a log chart, logarithmic scale, that has that will provide a a um, a, a, a a larger or a taller target than if we're on an arithmetic scale. But by default, I use log scales because I believe that people don't trade on how many dollars per share they gained, but rather on what percent of their investment has been gained. So anyway, this is uh, OldSchoolCharts.com bringing you an update on the S&P 500. And uh, as of tonight, uh, I'm doing this late on the, on the evening of the 12th. As of tonight, the futures are looking pretty strong. So let's see if we can uh, get on up and uh, hit the high 11s. Maybe get up over 12 this week or next week. Good trading to you. Thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Visit the website.